here's the news. But just some of it. The entire country is transformed into a carnival fire after it broke that Robert Mueller, savior to humanity, has completed his long-awaited report on whether or not the man who is somehow the president of a country did a bunch of, or merely some, crimes. And as far as we know, according to some guy who done seen it, he didn't. That guy, of course, is former and current Attorney General William Barr, who once wrote a 19-page letter about how the Mueller investigation shouldn't even exist, and who was once referred to as the cover-up general for his role in covering up scandals, aka war crimes, for both Reagan and Bush the first. So, there you have it. President Trump, not just a nickname, he's the actual president, didn't do those crimes. I guess we were all wrong, and he wasn't a bad president after all, and we here at Cody Shoddy are sorry that we ever doubted him. Shine on, sir. Shine on. Oh, but, uh, wait, wait, so maybe there's some more. News, that is. So it turns out that this Mueller report is so steamy that it's too hot for the GOP, and many Republicans have pushed to block it from reaching the public eye. There seems to be a concerted effort to discredit the very idea of the investigation by lying. For example, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy recently called ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee Adam Schiff a modern day Joe McCarthy, despite slightly less recently saying on recorded audio behind closed doors with Fox News' Paul Ryan, quote, there's two people I think Putin pays, Rohrbacher and Trump. Laughter, swear to God, end of quote. Or, for a more specific example, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, gravedigger of democracy, blocked a resolution to release the full Mueller report, despite everyone disagreeing with him. His reasoning was that the cover-up general, not his words, and the special counsel need time to make sure there's no sensitive material, even though the resolution didn't specify a timeline. So what are you talking about, Mitch? Also, Mueller definitely thought of sensitive material before he submitted the report, and even if he didn't, it wouldn't take weeks to figure it out, so what are you talking about, Mitch? Also, the DOJ is going to allow the subjects of the investigation to redact anything in the report before it's released, which is not how this works. So what are you doing, Mitch? But also, Mitch is apparently very concerned about Russian election meddling, saying, quote, it is deeply disturbing that the Obama administration wasn't prepared for Russian threats in election meddling. Despite in 2016, quote, according to several officials, McConnell raised doubts about the underlying intelligence and made clear to the administration that he would consider any effort by the Obama White House to challenge the Russians publicly an act of partisan politics. He told Obama, you're trying to screw our candidate and refused to sign a letter condemning Moscow for their election meddling. And like a day ago, when President Trump was asked if he had any strategy to combat the Russian election meddling in 2020, the reporter who asked was told by him to be quiet. But anyway, Mitch is, uh, Mitch, Mitch, hey, he's concerned. But whatever. You know, maybe the report does need time. You know, the cover-up general can read a more than 400-page report in less than two days and make a legal assessment and four-page summary that only quotes four fragments of sentences from the report, one of which clearly stating that the president has not been exonerated, but they probably, they just need more, they need more time. Quote, weeks, not months. Like how the Star Report, a 445-page document, was submitted on a Friday, voted on by Congress over the weekend, and released to the public two days after it was submitted, becoming one of the most viewed documents on the internet. The Star Report became multiple hardcover books that spawned sequels and an audio tape version selling millions of copies. So we must assume this clearly means the Mueller Report is extra hot and steamy. It's treason steamy. They literally accused the President of the United States of being an agent for a foreign government. That's equivalent to treason. That is punishable by death in this country. Now, to be fair and balanced, and TM and CNR, she's not saying that accusing the president of treason is treason and punishable by death. She's just saying that people accused the president of treason and treason is punishable by death. Okay, she, she's just pointing out that accusing someone of treason is an outlandish thing for a person to claim. Subversion. It was treason. It was really treason. Oh, okay. That's a real 
normal thing for a leader to imply that treason is being against the leader. Nothing fashy about that. But all right, we're going with, actually, you did the treason by thinking maybe I did a treason. Okay. And I'm sure there's no way that anyone is using this gap of time between a single person's summary of the report and the public actually getting to read the longer and more nuanced version to brazenly conclude sweeping innocence while desperately trying to get the country to move on before anyone takes a closer look. Fellas, ladies, take the loss. It's right. over. You got worked. There is no evidence. You heard of the very calm man. Go home. Nothing more to see here in the report that only one person who doesn't believe presidents can do crimes has read. The report, which states about specific crimes of the president, quote, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Well, that report has totally exonerated the president of crimes, and we all need to just move on. Only, here's a fun idea. Let's non-sarcastically do what this man says and move on from the Mueller report for just a moment. You know, even though we haven't actually read it and absolutely should, let's assume that this long-awaited investigation did legally exonerate the POTUS from collusion with Russia and obstruction of justice. And instead of using speculation, let's take a moment to address the facts that we do know. Because we actually don't really talk about the Russia stuff much on this show because it's definitely been hyped up. There are better ways to cover it than Putin tells Trump everything to do. There are more important things that maybe the media should be covering during an investigation that they can't do anything about. The idea that Robert Mueller will save everybody from Trump is a wee bit childish. There were a lot of weirdos and grifters who took advantage of it. The hysteria around the case contributed to some xenophobia, not the president's brand of dangerous, racist, blatantly fascist xenophobia, but still some xenophobia about Russia. And even though Russia did meddle in the election, the Democrats and media have definitely used it as an excuse to engage in zero self-reflection after 2016. But we're here. The investigation has concluded. The calm man wants us to move on. So let's not cover the summary of the Mueller report. Let's just go over the facts in a segment I'm calling a timeline of perfectly normal events and behavior. No need to look into this any further. Journey with me to the far, far times of January 2016, when all the kids were blorking down the cyber street on their hoverboards to see the hot new Point Break remake, and a young nation was gearing up for an exciting presidential election. Who would win, we all wondered with glee. Let us eagerly speculate on the totally harmless thefacebook.com while watching this new Louis C.K. special. It was during this same month that a man named Michael Cohen, the executive vice president and special counsel to the Trump Organization, called a Russian official and spoke about a real estate project in Moscow, Russia. Well, actually, let's back up even further to a few years earlier when each of the current president's big boy sons bragged on at least two separate occasions about all of the money they get from Russia, a country that Trump has repeatedly denied having anything to do with, financial or otherwise, at one point saying, quote, you know, the closest I came to Russia, I bought a house a number of years ago in Palm Beach, Florida. Or, as his former campaign manager and current felon Paul Manafort might phrase it. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. Ah, beautiful. You should be in prison for much worse than financial crimes. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, all right? So January 2016. Michael Cohen called a Russian official to talk about the Republican frontrunner for president building a tower in Moscow, Russia, a thing he would later lie to the U.S. Senate Select Committee about and go to jail for. Two months later, now in March, a Trump campaign foreign policy advisor named George Papadopoulos would meet with Joseph Mifsud, a professor with contacts to the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Just two more months after this, and little Georgie Pap would brag to an Australian diplomat that Russia totes has dirt on HRC. This hot goss led the diplomat to report the conversation, which led the FBI to start an investigation in July into whether or not the Russian government was trying to influence or infiltrate Donald Trump's presidential campaign. But before that, Michael Cohen would conduct an email exchange with someone from the Trump Organization concerning a trip to Moscow to discuss a real estate deal. Cut to June! still before the FBI investigation began, and Julian Paul Assange, editor for WikiLeaks, would go on the record saying that he doesn't like Hillary Clinton because she went after him legally and is specifically targeting her campaign. 
In a seemingly unrelated headline from that very same month, Trump was urged by his daughter as well as his sexual rival Jared Kushner to replace his campaign manager with a man named Paul Manafort, who at the time of his hiring was in debt to pro-Russian interests by $17 million. According to later indictments, Manafort was acting as an unregistered agent for the government of Ukraine, laundering tens of millions of dollars for his work as a lobbyist and consultant. And he was now the current president's campaign manager. So in that same month of June, Manafort, along with Don Jr. and Jared Kushner, met with a Kremlin-connected Russian lawyer in an attempt to get more dirt on Hillary Clinton. We know this meeting took place because despite the president saying it didn't happen, the president also told us it did. It's not speculation, it's a literal fact. Like how the RNC changed their platform to be a bit more pro-Russia shortly after Manafort joined the campaign. Then, starting on July 22nd, Assange began a large dump of DNC emails just a few days before this happened. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. This is the then presidential candidate and now real president publicly urging Russia to hack Hillary Clinton in the DNC emails, literally calling for a cyber attack on the United States. Again, with the strictest attention to facts, that is what he is doing in this video. Trump would then spend the months leading to the election brazenly praising the leaks that would follow, literally saying, I love WikiLeaks to a cheering crowd. Boy, I love reading those WikiLeaks. This WikiLeaks stuff is unbelievable. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. It's been amazing what's coming out on WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Folks, we haven't even gotten to the actual election. We're still in 2016, specifically in the days between September 21st and October 12th, when Donald Trump Jr. has a casual correspondence with WikiLeaks, who asks him to promote their email leaks and give them one of his father's tax returns to make them appear impartial. We know this because Don Jr. himself shared the conversation. He very factually shared it to everyone on purpose like a kid who proudly holds up his bathtub poo. In that conversation, we see that WikiLeaks asked Trump Jr. to share a specific link, something he absolutely did on October 14th, which ironically is the same day Mike Pence looked Fox News straight in their racist little eyes and claimed that they were not in cahoots with WikiLeaks. Governor, we know you got a places to go, but one other question, final question about WikiLeaks, and that is some have suggested on the left that it, all this bad stuff about Hillary, nothing bad about Trump, uh, that your campaign is in cahoots with WikiLeaks. Uh, I, nothing could be further from the truth. This, of course, despite, in addition to Donnie Jr.'s communications, the fact that Roger Stone, Paul Manafort's best bud, career rat f***er, super fan of an obstructor of justice, currently charged with obstruction of an official proceeding, five counts of false statements and one count of witness tampering, was directed by Trump campaign officials to be an intermediary between them and WikiLeaks. And while this was all happening, later investigations would learn that at least 13 Russian nationals were carrying out a campaign of deceit by posing as American citizens and organizing grassroots rallies to support then-candidate Donald Trump. Again, this is a thing that actually happened. These people were later indicted by the United States for this. Other people indicted, of the many indictments made during this investigation that has completely exonerated the president, were 12 literal Russian spies. They were indicted for hacking and leaking emails from the DNC and Clinton campaign, part of one of the indictments reading, On or about July 27, 2016, the Conspirator 7 attempted after hours to spear fish for the first time email accounts at a domain hosted by a third-party provider and used by Clinton's personal office. At or around the same time, they also targeted 76 email addresses at the domain for the Clinton campaign. July 27th being this day. Russia, if you're listening. But in the months leading up to the election, we had no idea about most of what was happening. Perhaps even the man currently in charge of knowing what's going on in a whole country was blissfully unaware of what was going on directly around him. But at least the FBI was investigating whether or not he was knowingly or unknowingly being infiltrated by anti-American foreign interests and agents. And so, on October 28, 2016, FBI Director James Comey made the good but also smart decision to publicly announce that he is reopening the Clinton email probe. So great work, James. James and the giant f***ing length of your body. 
Then the election happened and it was sad for some people and mean for other people. And on December 29th of 2016, smack dab in that Christmas vacation week, something Trump brought back actually. He saved Christmas folks. Anyway, after Trump saves Christmas folks, Trump National Security Advisor Michael T. Flynn called a senior member of the presidential transition team in Mar-a-Lago a day after then President Obama signed an executive order announcing sanctions against Russia for meddling with the last election. Something they definitely did. During that phone call, Flynn discusses what he should communicate with the Russian ambassador about those sanctions. Then, immediately after this phone call, Flynn calls the Russian ambassador and asks him not to escalate the situation, effectively going over the head of the then president. On the 30th, a day later, Putin released a statement saying that Russia would not retaliate. Just like Flynn asked. Not because Flynn asked, let's not get hysterical, but just like Flynn asked. Finally, we got a new year and a chance to start afresh. Unfortunately, the measurement of time is an artificial construct, and so January of 2017 began with the release of an assessment by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, suggesting that maybe, perhaps, kinda, Russia definitely meddled in our election, whether or not it was effective. This is something that President Trump has never acknowledged or taken seriously, despite even the cover-up general's summary of the Mueller report affirming it. But anyway, this phone call by Trump's national security advisor was also during the month that both George Papadopoulos and Michael Flynn were interviewed by and lied to the FBI about their previous meetings concerning Russia. Why would they lie? Well, that's a very good question, you. Why did everyone lie about all of this stuff? Why does the president lie about their lying? Uh, the FBI said he wasn't lying, as I understand it, and, uh, and... That's a, a lie, a bizarre lie. Because not only did the FBI say that Michael Flynn was lying, so did Michael Flynn. But anyway, one week after he was sworn in, Donald Trump arranged a dinner with good decision comer up with her, James Comey, from before. According to Comey, it was during this meeting that the president specifically asks for his loyalty concerning the independent investigation. But in fair and balancedness, this is denied by the White House, who we can all certainly trust to be truthful at this point in time. But in fair and balancedness full it should also be noted that Comey's account is corroborated by an extremely detailed memo only a complete square would write, it was also probably a good idea, and sent it out after the dinner. This nerd memo for dorks, along with describing this loyalty exchange, recounts a jumbled conversation ranging from Baron Trump's height to whether or not the president got peed on by prostitutes. Also, and pretty unrelated. Comey mentions a conversation he had with the food servers about the height clearance in submarines, implying that this very tall man is subtly obsessed with the height of things. Anywho, Trump fired Comey, the height pervert, on May 9th of 2017. The official statement was that a memo by Rod J. Rosenstein concerning Comey's handling of Clinton's emails was the reason why he was fired. Comey's handling of Clinton's emails, of course, being something the president loved and also helped get him elected. But this firing had nothing to do with the ongoing Russia investigation, something even the vice president came out and made crystal clear at the time. That's but not what, but let me, let me be clear with you. That was not what this is about. Between campaign officials and Russian Look, officials. That's not what this was about. Oh boy. And then, literally a day after the vice president said that, our new president, of the United States said this. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story, it's an excuse. So there you have it. The President of the United States going on record flat out confessing that he fired the director of the FBI because he was investigating him. Which I think means we don't have to have him as president anymore, right? Like. Like if your local mayor faced allegations of crimes in conjunction with a neighboring town that wants to f up your town, and then your local mayor fired the police detective and then publicly said he did it because that detective was investigating allegations of crimes in conjunction with a neighboring town that wants to f up your town, well then you'd, you'd get rid of that mayor, right? Especially when he invites a bunch of powerful people from that neighboring town to brag about how he fired the guy investigating him the next day. Then he, I don't know, like, 
gives them the keys to all the town's mailboxes. Look, obviously this analogy isn't holding up. And all I really did anyway was replace country with town, because maybe it doesn't need an analogy to convey this point. But to recap, we're at May 19th of 2017, and our president has openly obstructed justice in a very factual way. It can be difficult to prove intention, and as noted by James Comey and Michael Cohen and anyone who listens to him, the president talks like a mob boss and makes himself clear without being explicit. So the vague, contradictory way in which our very normal president speaks, coupled with the failure to establish a clear corrupt intent, is speculated to be the reason Mueller didn't officially conclude Trump obstructed justice when he fired the man investigating him for crimes. Legal experts and even Comey are confused by Mueller's punting of judgment, but another reason he did this is likely because he is putting the duty on Congress, but only because that's how it's supposed to work. But we won't know until we actually, you know, read the report. So I'm just gonna fly off some other facts that might also be examples of obstruction or manipulating witnesses or encouraging perjury, like telling the FBI director, I expect loyalty, trying to stop your adorable gremlin of an attorney general from recusing from an investigation into your possible crimes, asking intelligence chiefs to push back against an FBI collusion probe after Comey revealed its existence, ordering Robert Mueller to be fired, but then backing off when the White House counsel threatens to quit, dictating lies to your son to lie about your campaign meeting with Russians who have dirt on your political opponent, saying things out loud like, if Barr had been AG, the Mueller probe wouldn't have happened, saying on camera that you fired your FBI director because of the investigation he was conducting into your campaign's behavior, the special counsel writing in the report that the president is not exonerated. But again, we haven't read it, you know, who knows? Maybe that's all normal behavior. So let's skip ahead to October 2017, and our Georgie boy pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI back in January. Flynn followed shortly after in December. Then, as we spent 2018 marinating in this information, as it slowly came to light, things got, mmm, a little grosser. That affair, according to the Wall Street Journal, between adult film star Stormy Daniels and the now President of the United States. Remember all the way back in January 2018 when the Wall Street Journal reported that one month before the election, Trump lawyer Michael Cohen paid $130,000 to silence Stormy Daniels about her alleged affair with a the then-candidate? Do you remember that far back? And how this was kind of sort of like a, like a campaign finance violation, but also who gives a shit because the world was a flaming joke? Well, it was that February when Michael Cohen claimed to have paid the hush money completely by himself. And then later, on April 5th, Trump seemed to corroborate this by flat out denying he knew about the payments to Stormy Daniels, saying that he had no idea where the money came from. Do you know where he got the money to make that payment? No, I don't know. Did you hear that? Well, in case you didn't, the transcript is on the official White House webpage. As in, it's an absolute fact that he denied making or knowing about these payments. Then, 21 days later, the weirdest thing happened. But Michael would represent me and represent me on some things. He represents me like with this uh, crazy Stormy Daniels deal. For some unknown reason, possibly brain related, our president said the complete opposite of the thing he had said before. And by May 3rd, he was just tweeting about how he reimbursed Michael Cohen for his affair hush money, as if this was you know, like, like not a thing that should completely ruin a political career. And cut to now-ish, and Michael Cohen is claiming that Trump even directed him to lie about hush money during the campaign. But hey, you know, why should we believe him? He's a, he's a liar. He's a, he's a known liar. Can we really believe a word said by a liar like, like, like Michael Cohen, the only liar who lied about this thing? No, I don't know. Ah, jeez. What other facts do we have about the president who's totally exonerated? Uh, there's the whole thing where he started a sham university and had to pay a bunch of money to people because of it. Then he went on TV multiple times and accused the judge of mishandling the case because he was Mexican. And that's certainly something a president would get investigated for in the normal dimension we all have clearly been dislodged from via some unseen cosmic event. We're building a wall. He's a Mexican. We're building a wall between here and Mexico. The answer is, he is giving us very unfair ruling. I want to, I'm building a wall, okay? 
and it's a wall between Mexico, not another country. But he's not, my, he's not from Mexico. In my opinion. He's from Indiana. He is he's Mexican, Mexican heritage, and he's very proud of it. Oh, and remember the time he joked about sexual assault and also did some sexual assaults, including raping at least one of his ex-wives? And then there's the fact that he has so many conflicts of interest that Bloomberg has created a database on all of the scandals involving his appointees and family. Speaking of, here's some old news. There was a special investigation into the financial dealings of Jimmy Carter's peanut farm, and they published released the 180 page report about it but anyway his uh, his lies and bullshit right um uh, his wall related shutdown and tariff war they're damaging the economy the constant growing evidence of his lifetime of financial crimes and bank fraud the you know the, 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 the kids in the camps thing saying out loud that he wanted to ban an entire religion from entering the country he's lost 94 percent of his administration's court cases regarding his proposed policies partly because they're illegal partly because he surrounds himself with incompetence he blatantly lied about mexico paying for that dumb wall and all of these are facts which you can look up yourself or i don't know the fact that he hilariously got toilet paper stuck on his shoe while entering air force one after a very long car ride technically a fact about trump and the last two years of his presidency just yesterday he allegedly reversed his secretary of education's decision to defund the special olympics though he maintains all other cuts to disability programs while increasing executive salaries womp womp mr president but also he said this about it i heard about it this morning i have uh, overridden my people we're funding the special olympics this is the president saying he heard about something that morning, something his administration proposed weeks earlier in his own budget that everyone else in the country had been talking about for days. My point is, it is a fact that Donald Trump is a habitual liar and a grade A chuckle fuck who is bad at his job. Anyone who isn't a disingenuous grifter or in deep partisan denial can tell that. And if he really didn't knowingly collude with Russia, that means a lot of corrupt people around him, the best people, did. And he somehow didn't notice it the whole time, and isn't at all curious about why that would have happened. And that's very strange. His behavior through all of this has been objectively very strange. He continues to not acknowledge that Russia meddled and wanted him to win. They were sort of for and against both, not just one way. Nope. He says stuff like, There was no crime. As you know, uh, you're only allowed to do this legally if there's a crime. It's only legal to investigate if there are crimes. If there are crimes? What? Nope. Anything else to add, bud? I was the most innocent human being. Okay. Anyway, because of all this shadiness and incompetence and the obvious fact that Donald Trump is pathologically full of shit, a lot of people had it in their heads that the Mueller report was going to be this huge cathartic moment. They imagined the president being dragged away in handcuffs while he dramatically screamed out his crimes like Alan Alda at the end of Murder at 1600, a well-known movie we all remember the plot of. But that isn't what happened. Wesley Snipes and <laughs> Dennis Miller they didn't save us. Like everything else in life, we have to be patient and determined and probably just wait it out until the next election and let him know he's not wanted here. He can't sit with us. Although to be fair, he can actually be impeached for many reasons. A simple example would be via the Constitution's Emoluments Clause, something I mentioned several years ago, back when I also made videos about like, how Star Wars is secretly bad, but also good or whatever. But also, to be balanced, Let's hear about impeachment from someone who talks about the president in the saddest, most mafia toady way possible, Trump sycophant and Senator Lindsey Graham. So the point I'm trying to make is you don't even have to be convicted of a crime because impeachment is not about punishment. Impeachment is about cleansing the office. Impeachment is about restoring honor and integrity to the office. Cool. Cool, man. The point is, while we absolutely need to sit down and examine Mueller's report when it comes out in weeks or months or according to Barr just now, sometime in mid-April for some reason, or you know, just whenever the subjects of the report and the cover-up general are comfortable with it being released. So we'll examine it because the president's definitely a compulsive liar who obstructed justice. But we also can't spend the next two years obsessing over it. There are other things the president is doing, other things America is doing, other things other people are doing. 
and the solution to Donald Trump isn't shouting Putin puppet at him. No puppet, States, no puppet. And the next presidential challenger can't just run on the alleged and factual crimes of the current president, but they need to focus on their own policies and how they intend to help the American people. You know, let's fix the country, make people's lives better, speak to how they can be helped, not just to how Trump is bad. And then hopefully in 2020, if Trump is no longer in office, we can totally arrest him for stuff. Hopefully, maybe. But maybe don't like base the entire stability of your mental health around it. Or I do, I'm not your father. Or am I? Hi everybody! Thanks for watching that video until the very end, which all of you definitely did. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuff that you know about because you're not two years old. And check out our podcast, Even More News, and our patreon.com slash some more news. And you are f great.